My big break that introduced me to the industry where no one could challenge me anymore would probably have to be um, playing the P the organ for Ray Charles. Dang. Because um, even to this day, I'm getting residual respect from that. So it doesn't even matter where I go, if I'm doing a hip hop record or a country record or a rock record, if people in the room are aware that I work with Ray Charles, it just it cancels out a whole lot of conversations. I ain't got to talk as long, you know what I'm saying? So outside of that, I would probably say my first platinum album, which was um, Summertime Record with Will Smith, that probably cemented my producer credibility. Because before that, I was just known as a musician in the D.C. area, around college, Philly. I was known more as a musician. But I got my chops in with the production when I started working with Will and Jazzy Jeff, what up, folks. They kind of put me on officially where I was getting checks regularly. You know what I mean? So, yeah. If you go to a Craig, uh, what's, it, no, what's it called? The Making of Good Life on YouTube. Um, there's a whole lot of conversations on there about whether Toon is the keyboard player. And just for the record, uh, that would be yours true. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah. Alright, alright. Toop is my dude though, so that ain't even really nothing. That's a cold cat. Alright. Um, yay. Just a whole different kind of animal. Uh, heck of respect between us. Um, I, I view Ye as a younger brother before I do music thing because we have a different kind of relationship. So he's definitely more family than anything, but we do work together and it's absolutely fun because I don't, I never know what he's going to do. Kanye lives from the purple cow standpoint <laughs> uh, and he understands that theory very well and honestly better than most because he doesn't just approach his musicality with the purple cow concept but he approaches his lyrics from a purple cow standpoint and uh, so I, you know, he, he's a good dude. I, all this ego stuff and all these little, you know, rants and tirades and all the stuff that y'all seeing right now. That ain't homie, that's not even who he is, so, you know, that's just a whole different thing. I don't even know that cat. The cat I'm talking about, that's my brother, so. All right. It's all good. You'll see who I'm talking about in about five minutes. Yeah. All right. Um, I would have to say a good mix, the way I would view a good mix is just absolute clarity and that knock. You know, it's a really fine balance. I mean, a lot of these, I mean, a lot of engineers that don't understand that balance, they give you incredible clarity and then they don't have that knock in there. And they feel like if you create that knock, um, you're going to lose some of the clarity. Uh, the, the cats that have mastered the art of making great hip hop records in engineering, they know how to strike that balance. So um, I'm going to be mixing a record in LA um, Saturday for Rick Ross. Hi. Um, do you like that record? Yes, sir. Oh, all right. Well, let, me, matter, let me get that record a shout out. What up, Rick? What up, J. Blue? What up, St. John? The record is called. Uh, Hustler, I'm your hustler, so get ready for that. Oh, what up, Tank? Tank wrote it, let me give him a shout out. But if a purple cow walked in, it would still be a cow, but it would stand out more because it's purple. But that's how I feel about music. The records that stand out the most, they can still be in the family, but if they stand out and they have a stickiness factor that just kind of clings to you and you can't shake it, and you're like, man, that's a purple cow. That's a well, that's the same with a purple record. If it just jumps out and they play it in the club, you ain't got but a couple of seconds to grab people's attention. So if it comes on in the club and it grabs you and knocks you in the chest, and you see people running up there and say, oh, that's my joint, it's because it's a purple cow. It's, it's not because it's average, it's not because it's safe, it's because it's purple. Right now, that's my theory, purple cow. Now, I read another book tomorrow, I might change that concept. Yeah. That's how I see it right now. I see you've been on your tipping points and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ultimately, what the plan is, because I got I'm doing country, I'm in Nashville today, I'm doing country records. Um, I'm going to LA, like I said, doing hip hop again. I'm in Miami, and I'm going back to the A, and I'm doing some R&B stuff. 
and um, I just got a contract with Madison Square Garden to do their music, you know, and um, I got a contract, I uh, got a conversation happening right now with the SEC and ACC for their music. So I really don't know. I do know ultimately that I got so much love for my city called Nashville, Tennessee. Some call it Cashville. Yeah. You are. Um, I want to do some special things here. And I got some conversations that I'm brewing with radio. So look out for that because something really special could happen between me and my city. Because um, I'm tired of playing around the perimeter of Nashville and working with all these dudes and not doing something here. So if y'all got heat, get at me because we got to do some things here. And we need some superstars in this town for real. But that's that's what my thinking is right now. I don't I don't really have a, a specific plan for what the future holds because I got this far without even thinking like that. I just brought great musicality to the table, so I'm just gonna keep dishing out that musicality, man. Hanging out with incredible writers like this is the AJ right here, you know? and uh, just do what we do. All right. Yo, this is Craig King, producer, philanthropy, whatever. Love you, man. Peace.